You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome edition of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, as always. <laughs> Low when you say that. And my name is Rob, as always, also. As always, also. Anyways, super glad to be back in this chair, hanging with Paul, hanging with you. And uh, man, as always, we really appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with us. We love hearing from you. Thank you for all of you who have sent in your question, because again, it bears repeating. <laughs> As you figured out, because we repeat it a lot, the show is all about you and it doesn't go anywhere without your questions. So askdroneyou.com. We want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. So uh, we look forward to hearing from you. We definitely look forward to hearing uh, from you as always. And just want to give a special uh, shout out and thank you to a couple of groups of people. Uh, number one, want to give a special shout out and thank you to everyone in our sales class. We've got that last class this week. Very excited about that. And just want to say thank you to everyone. And uh, it's actually like as as teaching that class, it has invigorated me to do things. So it's really been um, something that I have uh, very much so enjoyed in all honesty. Um, that said, also want to give a big shout out and thank you to everyone in our Drone U Elite, past, present, and new. Uh, as many of you know, we're going to be kind of getting fired up in offering in-person trainings all over the country again. Wouldn't be able to do it without them. And also just kind of a big shout out and a big thank you to our team here at Drone U. In the last year. It has been a trying year for all of us. And I'm very, very, very grateful for everyone on our flight crew, for everyone all over the world who continues to work and continues to work hard. Uh, it means the world to me. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, because as many of you know, I love Drone You because I love helping you. And I love helping you because it's selfish for me. Why is it selfish for me? Well, because I love to fly. And so when I can help others reach their aspirations, it really, uh, it really feeds me in a positive and slightly negative way as well. So uh, mostly 100% positive. Anyway, uh, but, <laughs> but that said, I just wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you to all of you. Um, also a big shout out and thank you to all of our props beta testers. Uh, that program, the beta is officially over. Very excited for everyone who's in our props programs. And don't forget, if you're here listening to Drone You, you already know the value and how much we can help you as a pilot. If you are ready to take that power and scale it and organize it and offer convenience of ease for starting drone programs, you got to check out props. If you go to propsflightschool.com or props.thedroneu.com and check out why props is built for teams. What's up, Drone You? Casey here. I'm 24 years old from Atlanta, Georgia. I recently got let go um, due to covid from a surveying job that we did laser scanning for Georgia Pacific and multiple other manufacturing companies. Also, we utilized our EB plus drone for topography on golf courses. So I'm familiar with processing data with ground control, GPS points, all that good stuff. What advice would you give me trying to get my feet wet in the drone business. Thanks, guys. Love your videos. Thank you very much for saying that you love our videos. We love uh, callers like you. So thank you very much. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Um, that said, Rob, you know, we've talked about this one, uh, or not this one, but a more macro issue of, you know, getting your feet wet and kind of the strategies and opportunities behind that. But it seems like this particular caller might have a unique opportunity as we were kind of talking yeah. in pre-show to leverage mm -hmm. his existing network. So, I mean, when it comes to leveraging what he already has in your eyes, what do you think is kind of the best uh, navigational path for him to go? Well, number one, I, I think that there's two ways to look at this, right, Casey? And, and I don't mean to preach at you. <laughs> you uh, probably have, preach! you probably have parents that can, can tell you this stuff, but uh, I'm going to say it anyways. You, there's two ways to look at this, right? Negative or positive. 
And we, you didn't say much about whether you liked your job, whether there was a, a nice career path in front of you, potentially any of that stuff. Solid points. We're going to assume that this can be a good thing for you. And what, what, I, what I look at is the fact that it sounds like you had an opportunity to get some really great skills developed while you were there and get an introduction into the drone space, which is a, a very up and coming um, industry and opportunity. So we know that with quote unquote mapping, if I can use that term, even though you didn't use that term specifically, the things that you mentioned, of course, fit under that umbrella. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity that you can now leverage. And I'm going to let Paul talk more about the specifics of that. But I'll give you one little example. And that is my brother works for a company based in Houston that that maintains and works on the distribution of gas. And I know, and oil, so pipeline work, right? Massive company, assets all over the country. I think they even have some around the world. And I know that they have dabbled with using drones for inspections, but they're still sending people out there in trucks in the middle of nowhere to inspect these, these insane. pipelines. And I'm just flabbergasted by it. You already have the knowledge of the EB, for example, which is probably a drone that could be used for that, I would imagine, um, or yeah. something similar to it, right? And so you've got a, no a knowledge base that allows you to go into all sorts of different circumstances and see how you can bring value to different companies, whether it be trade shows or whatever. So, man, I think you actually have a tremendous amount of opportunity, and we will try to answer your, your question more specifically as, as to how to deploy that. And I, I, I'm excited for you because you're young. You got this great opportunity in front of you. It's an exciting and fun opportunity. So uh, let's help them out. No, I, I, you know, it, the reason I was kind of quiet sitting here thinking is I know it can be a, a gut punch yeah, for to sure. get fired, whether, whether you're battling a divorce, whether you're battling uh, a career change or an unexpected change of some sort, it can be uh, kind of emotionally, uh, you know, trying. And I don't mean to switch track too hard from your point, Rob. It's just that as I was sitting here, I was just thinking, you know, we always talk about the how to, the what to do, right? When you're in this situation, how to leverage your existing contacts, what to go after, what to uh, put your time and, and effort into. And I think one of the things that we kind of breeze over, and I would, I would fault myself for this really, is the emotional aspect that you that you do have to come you have to get past um, on your own and it's extremely difficult and I would say that it's extremely difficult from from personal experience in various uh, various ways um, but that said I just want I just want to take a second because I feel like we don't give each other enough grace. It doesn't matter the industry that we're in, the career that we're working in. We don't take enough time to really empathize with other people and, and, and really help them out by just understanding. And so what I want to say really fast before I kind of go back to your point, because I don't want to miss your point, um, is that it is okay to uh, feel sad. It is okay to have that gut punch, but do know it's ultimately a choice to continue to be sad and to continue to allow yourself to hurt your prospects moving forward. Uh, I would say this because I think I'm guilty of this myself. Uh, and I had to really think about, you know, hey, by continuing to be lazy and not taking action, I'm actually making this problem worse and worse and worse for myself. And so I will just say, you know, as we give, as we sit here and provide answers to your question, just know that, uh, you know, you've got to overcome the mental struggle about, you know, kind of being tossed out to the curb kind of thing. I agree with Rob's point that he said that, you know, we're going to look at this as a positive. I think that that is our only way to look at it. Obviously, we have a choice in how we can look at it. But if we believe believe that this is a stepping stone, a leveling up, you know, one door closed so that others can open. I think that is so crucial for you to keep in mind. And I will just say that because I have been humbled myself in the last couple of years and understand uh, how important that emotional aspect is. But anyway, Rob, I don't want to get uh, too far uh, switch tracking from uh, from your kind of no, that's you, you, important to say. You kind of wanted to get right to me, like okay, so what are we going to tell them? Or, or, you no, know? no, no, that's fine. And, and I'll mention one other. I think everything you said is is very obviously very valid. One other thing I, that just comes to mind in terms of practical is Atlanta. Obviously, is a, a big city, huge. Right? It's it's a massive city. They and have so, the biggest or most or the busiest airport, right? Uh, 
I think Hartsfield Jackson's the busiest. I as think. as I understand it, it's it's definitely up there, probably top three, if not the biggest. But I don't know. I just think of what about other surveying companies? Um, you've got a pretty solid knowledge base for them specifically. We don't know the circumstances behind why this particular survey company let you go, but maybe leveraging what you learned there that benefited their activities could benefit another survey company. So that's an option. See what other survey companies are out there and talk to them. And I think that's a really powerful point to leverage his existing network and contacts is to go, obviously they were your competitors, but now they're not your competitors. And, you know, go to those managers, those HR people and reach out to them and say, look, I was on a drone team. If you guys are thinking about, you know, building up a drone team, I have a lot of experience and knowledge of what works and what doesn't. Look, we're not saying, you know, you're the end all be all. We're not saying that, right? I would argue that there's always something to learn and you might not be able to provide all of their answers, but what you can provide is a solid foundation to help them uh, explore and navigate how they will use those tools and if it's right for them and their company. That said, I think the second and third things that I would be doing is two, uh, or number two, I would be looking at uh, associations of surveyors. Uh, number three, I would be on like Upwork or something like that, where, you know, I know people are looking uh, actively for surveyors, et cetera. Um, that said, those associations, getting involved with those associations, reaching out to see if there's any openings that these are your, this is your expertise, et cetera. You know, you never know how far a little cupcake and a resume will go to, uh, <laughs> an association administrator. I mean, I always think of, um, uh, that construction association I did that presentation for five or six years ago and how the Army Corps of Engineers were there and, you know, uh, asking questions about uh, training and whatnot. So that said, the third thing I would do is go after construction because I think it's the most closely related to you. And the way that you would do that is, again, direct reaching out to these construction companies, project managers, um, you know, HR people, management, et cetera. But I think also what you should do is be looking uh again, you know, at these construction companies, at their LinkedIn, I would be commenting and I would be posting a lot in regards to their stories, essentially become a form of engagement for them um, because then you're helping them essentially and you may or may not get noticed that way. Um, let's see, what else would I do? Um, I would be building a portfolio. If you have examples of your work, I would be putting and I, you know, kind of talked about this with the sales classes, I would be, you know, essentially putting up a demo reel, not a video, but a, uh, a, a one page or one web page where you can have examples of everything that you're doing. So that way these people, you can essentially hand them a digital flyer and say, look, here's examples of stuff that I'm familiar with to give you guys an example. Yeah. Other than that, I think the last thing I would say is, you know, you've got to sign up for, I think some of these drone jobbing, uh, uh, websites, these aggregators, but think of it as practice, not really as a job, or it's just a, a way to get your foot in the door. And lastly, um, you got, I mean, I mean, Rob said it, you know, pre-show and it's an answer no one likes to hear. And that's myself included. There are so many days that I wake up just like, what am I, what, how is today going to be different? How is today going to be fun? How is today going to fulfill purpose and impact, et cetera? How am I going to further my life? And you're not going to further your life every single day. And I, I, I find myself kind of erroneous to think that like, it's okay to just have a normal day and go about things. But that also said, if you have a goal, you've got to do, you know, smaller, more consistent actions rather than just large actions to, in my opinion, kind of build up a snowball of, of actions that are going to help you build business. So, you know, what, Rob, we talked about, you know, the three things that he could do. One, leverage the existing contacts and network, reach out to those people. Two, reach out to surveying associations in the area. Three, uh, reach out to uh, construction associations, et cetera. Uh, and then lastly, we talked about the drone jobbing aggregators. All that to be said, if you take three actions a day or you make three phone calls per day, uh, it's probably not going to take too long before uh, your your next level up, your next uh, staircase or your next rung in the ladder appears and you're able 
to uh, build yourself up. Um, so I would say it's, you know, the, the long and the short answer that no one likes to hear is it takes work and you got to pound the streets. You got to hit the streets as, as Rob would say. It's so funny because as I sit here and think about is it, how hard is it really to beat the streets, et cetera? It's really not. It's really like a big mental obstacle, right? And these obstacles funny. are overcomable. And I know I just say that because like, if I sit here and I'm like, okay, I got to make phone calls today to people I don't know big deal, right? Why is that a big, it's not a big deal. Why is it not a big deal? Because every day I do something that scares me or I talk to someone who makes me nervous or I just work on that constantly, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you could say, why is it not a big deal? Well, because I don't know them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, who cares? Exactly. Literally. <laughs> but I say that sort of tongue in cheek because I understand what you're saying when you say it's not that hard. Depends on who you are, but it's relative. And if it's harder for you, you got more to push through. If it's easier for you, you got less to push through. Exactly. But ultimately, you either do it or you don't. Well, and let's be honest, we're in a day and age where we all want to socialize. And if you need to hit the streets, what does that mean? That means socializing. That means phone calls. That means visits. That means smiles, right? Make it fun. Be, I mean, like literally find a way to gamify it. You will have fun with it. You'll have fun talking to people. People will find joy in you. Your, their first impressions will be positive of you. Thus then again, increasing your chances. So I just sit here because I'm like analyzing. I always analyze myself and how I feel in certain situations in regards to the callers to see, you know, how I can relate and beating the streets or hitting the streets, right? It can be overwhelming. I mean, Rob, I sit here, I've got three to-do lists in front of me. And the first thing I said before we recorded is there's so much to do here. It's overwhelming, <laughs> right? And I just have to like not think about it. I have to like literally, instead of thinking about what are all the things I can get done, you know what, instead of worrying about that, just, you know, get hit the damn keyboard, Paul. You know what I mean? So I say this because I'm like talking to myself here. Anyway, it's not weird. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, people are listening. Yeah. Um, but that said, step one, this is a positive. Yeah, you were let go. Who cares? You get to be in control of your destiny, your future, and you decide what happens next. How hard you're willing to work is going to determine the outcome. There's that. And point number three is give yourself grace. It's okay to feel sad, but it's a choice to stay there. I rest my case. <laughs> yeah, I would emphasize spending time flying and working on your craft because it, it makes me think about, we, of course, here at DroneU, we get a lot of people that email us and say, hey, I've got such and such opportunity. Do you have a pilot in this part of the country? And and we typically will find somebody to farm it out to. And we love doing that. It's one of the, it's really satisfying to be able to provide work to the drone pilots that have been a part of the drone you community either. Generally, they still are. But one of the things that is very common for them to ask for is whoever you send us, they need to have a portfolio or a reel or something where we can see their work. And I just had a couple in the last couple of weeks that were really good opportunities, but that was something that they wanted to see. So take that to heart of starting to build that if you've not already. And uh, all it's going to do is make you better um, at what you're going to ultimately be doing if you stay in the drone industry. So get to work on that. Um, make a plan to get out there every day and fly if you can and, and then get out and model something. Yeah. Since you know how, you know how to process, get out there and do it. Go find something and model it and process it and start putting that portfolio together. That's going to be big for you. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, if people can't visualize, they can't understand what you do, it's going to be hard for them to help you. So that's a very good point, Rob. And uh, I think on that bombshell, it's going to end it for us today. If you have a question, do go to Ask Drone You and upload that question, whether it's in regards to your drone business, in regards to mapping and modeling, or in regards to a creative pursuit. Um, but on that note, I will agree with Rob a thousand percent that you just got to get out there and fly, make little mini trips, little mini adventures and go out and capture something beautiful. And, uh, it, yeah, I think it's, it's, I know that helped me a lot as much as I'm like, okay, what really helped me over the last six months, get over my hump. It was that, it was that all this advice, but it was Rob, it was what Rob just said about getting out there and flying. Yeah. So last point I'll make, and then we really will sign off. But as I think about you and how many jobs Paul has gotten by simply going to wherever there is and flying for fun. Yep. And people are intrigued and interested. The conversation starts before you know it. Paul's got a job. Paul's got a job. It's need, pretty fascinating. So just go out and fly. <laughs> you know, this whole savings plan we were talking about, I need to go out and fly more and just save it all straight up.
Yeah. I mean, yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, on that bombshell, that's going to do it. Uh, my name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Dronio. Ask <laughs> Dronio.